Bingo, we're back. Four o'clock rock. What a happy day. I'm Jay Fidel at Think Tech, and we have a show, new show, Working Together, okay? And uh, our host is uh, Cheryl Crozier Garcia. She's professor of human resources uh, at HPU, which is nearby where we, our studio is. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show, Cheryl. Thanks, Jay. Thanks for having me. Great to hear. Great to have you here. And um, we're, we're calling this episode. Let's let's meet Cheryl. <laughs> well, it's, I'm pleased to meet all of you. Hi. <laughs> so tell us about your you know your role at HPU. Tell us about how you got there. Tell us about your career so far. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a local girl. I was raised in Waipahu, um, third generation plantation kid. Uh, I attended public school in Waipahu, August Arnes Elementary, and then Waipahu Intermediate, Waipahu High School. Go Marauders. Um, <laughs> you heard it here. <laughs> that's right. I went to, I attended college on the mainland, Antioch College in Ohio. Antioch, very good school. That I explains almost went me. There. Yeah. You almost went to, why yeah, didn't you go? Yeah. I wound up going to a city school in New York, Queens College. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I can sing the song for you, but we don't have time for it. That's okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, so undergraduate degree from Antioch, and then I came back to Honolulu, and I was a member of the first graduating class of MBAs here at Hawaii Pacific College. Um, and then I had a, a career in corporate HR for a number of years here in Hawaii with consulting work on the mainland uh -huh. um, and oh, in great. other countries, and yeah. uh, finished a PhD at Walden University in 2003, and then worked my way up the academic ranks from instructor, and now I'm full professor, and since 2002 I've been program chair of the master's program in wow, HR. That's the, top of the, that's the top of the arch right there. Yes. So, you know, but uh, how did you, when did you first sort of understand that human resources was your thing, uh, and why? Well, um, there have only been two things I've ever wanted to be in my life. The first was an actor, and I wanted to be that from the time I was teeny tiny, uh, until I got to college and a management professor told me that I was wasting my talent and I should get into business. <laughs> and so then I thought, well, I don't, I took accounting courses, didn't really like those. I took marketing classes, they were okay, but they seemed a little limited. And then I took a class in personnel management. It was called personnel uh, back in the early Jurassic period. I remember. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I took that class and I went, ooh. These people spend their days reading books and talking to people. I can do that. <laughs> and so from that point, as a 20-year-old kid, I decided I was going to get into HR. And that's the only business field I've ever wanted to be in. Interesting, because mm -hmm. you're a people person. OK. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. OK. What is human resources? Our personnel now evolved into you. What is it exactly? Well. Human resources management deals with the acquisition, development, management, and retention of talent in an organization. Um, if you were to picture, you mentioned a pyramid, so picture an organization as a pyramid with senior leadership at the top and the majority of workers down the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, your HR department is responsible for moving people into that pyramid around it where it needs to go, and then maybe out of the organization. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, you're talking about organizational style, but I, I wanna, wanna go into one thing. Human resources, really, management connects with the workforce. Yes. Uh, ergo, we're calling this working together, this show. Right. And so you are in the best position you could be in to see exactly what kind of talent we have mm -hmm. and how maybe we want to change and shift and train and palpate that talent into a, a better workforce mm -hmm. for the community that we live in. Yeah, that, I think that's important. First, um, I am an optimist about what I see in Hawaii. It's hard to be an optimist today on election day, but you go ahead. Well, I voted this morning, right. so, <laughs> so yes, I'm hopeful. Um, but I'm an optimist about the talent I see here in Hawaii and, and what we are capable of accomplishing if we get out of our own way. Um, I think a lot of times, uh, not only companies, but individuals don't think big enough or have a realistic appreciation for who they are, what skills they have, 
um, and how they can really use those skills and their identities in order to uh, support their families in the way they would like to, uh, contribute to, to their communities in ways they believe important, solve some of the social issues and some of the other problems that we have as a community. I mean, uh, one of the things, since you bring up the election, one of the things that this election has taught me is that we don't have enough faith in ourselves. Ourselves individually or ourselves as a country? All of the above. Thank you. You know, if you, if you have confidence in yourself, you are more likely to see talent in others and not be challenged by it. But if you don't think that you have what it takes within you to be competitive, to be successful, uh, however you define success, um, then you're going to be threatened by what you see around I you. I think that's really a profound point, really profound. You can't possibly feel that you have a role in the landscape, in the, in the economy, mm -hmm. unless you have some confidence in yourself. That's right. And if you don't have confidence and you don't have a role, you're isolated and unproductive. Mm -hmm. That's true. However, uh, while I agree um, and support the idea that there is a circular relationship between confidence and accomplishment, that is, the more confidence we have, the more we're capable of accomplishing, I also think that confidence needs to be tempered with realism and with a fair dose of humility. I mean, I think that's the other thing we've seen in this election. Uh, well, where <laughs> we've we have, seen humility? Where? <laughs> no, no, no. Where we've seen people who, who have more confidence than is warranted by the amount of talent they exhibit for the jobs that they seek. It's like one of the great insults of the world is when you say, this person, always confident, sometimes right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, I mean, this is all really interesting in, in terms of um, the, the, the role of the, of the human resource manager. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I think we've been led, or I've been led, to, to feel that a human resources officer in a given corporation represents the corporation. There's an inherent conflict here. Represents the corporation. And yet, when I, as an employee, come to see you, that's, that's not exactly what happens. You actually also represent me. You're helping me individually and career-wise. So how do you cope with that? Do you go schizophrenic on that or what? You could. <laughs> um, or you can keep your goal in mind and work to that goal whatever strategy or tactics you have to use to maintain it. So say, for example, uh, you come to me uh, I'm an HR person, you are an employee, and you come to me saying that you would like to know um, what opportunities are available for upward growth in the company. You like what you see, you're happy with your job, you like your coworkers, but you would also like to improve uh, your position, get a promotion, put, uh, position yourself for more money, whatever those things are. So you come to me and ask me. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to figure out quickly what kind of skills you already have and what you need to be ready for that promotion. Or you want me to get the promotion. Absolutely, I do. You're rooting for me. You're advocating for me. You're advising and consulting with me to help me. That's right. And then I'm going to my peers and my superiors in higher levels of the organization, and I'm saying, hey, Jay Fidel came to talk to me today, and he's interested in becoming general counsel. He's been working on these kinds of things. I am going to advise him that he should continue his professional training in these areas. Can we start to mentor him with some project work or with some special assignments or other temporary gigs, replacing people on vacation or medical leave or whatever it is, to give you a taste of those positions so that you can decide whether or not you really want to do them. This is so valuable. Uh, but I have to, before we go to the next question I have in my mind, I, I want to just ask you, suppose you conclude on the basis of your conversation with this employee that he's not up to it, that he can't do it. He doesn't have the skill, he doesn't have the talent, he doesn't have the aptitude. What happens then? You're not going to go and advocate for him. You're going to have to tell him, hopefully in no uncertain terms, that this is not exactly what's in the cards for you. Today, but if I advised you, listen, in order to do this job that you say you want, you need to have 
a bachelor's degree, you need to have some level of experience, all of those kinds of things to meet the specifications for the job. So I'm going to pull out the job description and say, show me which ones of these you already have and which ones of these you still need. Then you can decide for yourself whether or not you'd like to pursue it. If you're still interested, you may pick up the phone and call uh, the local university and say, hey, have you got a night program for me? Or talk to professional development agencies within your own profession, whatever that is, and say, hey, I'd like to do some continuing ed. And I'm never going to tell you no, but I will tell you that's, that you'll need more training what than what you at. currently have. You're never going to say no. You are advocating for me. You are my counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, to the extent that you could possibly conceptually see this as a conflict, really, I think, you know, your job is to represent me. Mm -hmm. That's your job, represent me, help me in my career. But also my job to represent the organization. Yes. And to say, in order to be successful, Jay, in the position you want, you need to have these skills, these, this knowledge, these abilities, these traits, and this kind of experience. And if you have all of those, you position yourself for the upward move that you want. Mm -hmm. Now, on the flip side, mm -hmm. is an executive of the company, this hypothetical corporation, mm -hmm. comes to you and says, Cheryl, you know, we got a guy here. He's not cutting it. Counsel me, advise me, help me deal with that, either by fixing him or getting rid of him. Um, now, that's another side of that same conflict. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing to remember is there's no such thing as a bad employee. There's only a bad fit okay. between the employee and the position okay. or between the employee and the people with whom he or she works. Okay. So my first question to the supervisor is, what do you mean he's not working out? Okay. What does he's not working out look like to you? Show me in the job description the specific areas where this can employee I, can I complicate is not... this with real facts? Sure. Not real facts, but Facts, mm -hmm. granularity. Mm -hmm. He's not working out, Cheryl, because I, when he comes in every day, I smell alcohol on his breath, and I believe that he's either drunk or under the influence of some kind of, you know, illegal substance. I also find that he's looking out the window and not concentrating on anything. Uh, what do I do, Cheryl? Help me get, get, get him organized or out? Smells of alcohol. You sure that's not just cheap cologne? <laughs> Okay, you got me. <laughs> Maybe I'm jumping to conclusions. Well, but if you suspect something like that, can you document it? Because staring out the window doesn't necessarily mean he's not working. He may be thinking about how to solve a particular problem. You're, you're a total optimist, aren't you? <laughs> I have to be. I, I really, I, you, to be in HR, you have to be kind of an optimist. Yeah. You and have to believe to, in people. Well, and you have to believe that there's a good spot for everyone. Yeah. You ever see the movie Dave? Yes. Yes, <laughs> Dave. Today is Wednesday, and everybody works on Wednesday. That's kind of who you have to be. Um, and this is Think Tech. It's, it's actually Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to take a short break. We have Cheryl Crozier Garcia. She's the president of human, uh, make that a professor of human resources management at HPU, here on her show, Working Together. And today we're meeting Cheryl. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We are the co-hosts of Keys to Success, which is live on Think Tech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30, in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Bingo, we're back. I told you to come back. Cheryl and me are back. That's uh, Cheryl Garcia, uh, Crozier Garcia, uh, professor of human resources management at HPU. 
And we're talking about, let's not use names, but a case involving a local business, which is similar to the crazy fact pattern I threw out before. Want to talk about it? Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, there was, I did have someone come to me once and tell me, so-and-so smells like liquor first thing in the morning, uh, he's got to go. And so my first thing was, are you sure it's not cheap cologne? And he said, I'm pretty sure it's not cheap cologne. And my second question was, are you sure he's not just overusing the mouthwash? And as it turned out, this guy was so worried about having bad breath that every time he turned around, he would, he would um, gargle with the really strong medicine-y type mouthwash. And, so, and that stuff is like 80 proof. And so he was constantly smelling like it's mouthwash. Really, you, gotta get, you can't make any assumptions. No, you yeah. really can't. So I have two stories I want to tell you and see how you react. Okay. The first is a story about, let's call him Dan. Okay. Dan is from the mainland. Dan uh, had a great business education, MBA type education in, a, in an Ivy school. And Dan came out here to work in a big company. And Dan was here maybe a year when Dan and his wife, they all picked up and left. Why? Because he believed that the training program that this particular company was giving him was a training program to nowhere that he would never actually get up to the executive washroom. Um, and uh, for me, knowing him, knowing the company, I won't mention, um, it was a kind of a turning point. I began, I, be, I began to believe that it was very hard to get into it, to find a training program, an executive training program mm -hmm. in the state of Hawaii, even mm -hmm. in big companies who could afford to do that, and actually succeed through the training program. And if I look around now, today, with, with my limited experience, um, I do not think there's a lot of companies around that have such programs, uh, and, or there's a lot of people around who are in them and who have any level of confidence that they're gonna succeed in them. Thoughts? Well, there aren't a lot of companies uh, that have a dedicated uh, executive training or, or professional development for young executives or young managers coming up. That's true. But even when they have them a lot of times, they don't adequately dedicate resources. They don't spend time with the folks that they're mentoring. They don't create a set of expectations for what the trainee is obligated to do and what the company will do for them as part of that process. And then there's no end game in sight. That is to say, if you go through the training program, uh, where are we going to put you after? Once you're successful, where will you go? And so it, it's sort of an amorphous, uncon unconnected yeah. sort not of well block. Designed, not yeah, not well designed about. and not carefully thought out. Yeah. And now that I, does happen. I'll tell you my second story. Okay. Okay. Um, the, the acronym was ETF, and I, I think it stood for Educational Training Fund. Yes, I remember it. And it was uh, adopted in the middle or late 90s, and you could, if you were an employee of a company that participated in this thing, um, you would have a 5000 initially, a $5,000 lifetime fund from mm -hmm. the state, which you could apply toward training yourself. Right. You know, and you could go to a computer training course, any number of courses, in order to be uh, a better employee, a better person, and so forth. And the first thing that happened is it was pushed back by a lot of, it, it cost the employer some modest amount of money, not much. Um, it was pushed back from a lot of employers. Um, and the second thing that happened is uh, they reduced the 5000 to 3000 or something like that. And the third thing that happened is they defunded the program and it went kaput over the side. Mm -hmm. And now there was no more ETF. What I took out of that, I'm interested in your reaction, your comment on it. What I took out of that is that in Hawaii, um, local employers uh, do not really care to train their people. They do not support their people training themselves, as opposed to, say, for example, the military, where everybody gets trained every day. There's so much training going on in the federal establishment. It's ridiculous, maybe too much sometimes. But in the local business you know, um, community, um, everybody, including Sam Sloan, he's the one who opposed this thing. Sam Sloan, the guy's running right now today, a nice man. Mm -hmm. um, but he opposed, he opposed the cost imposed on the employer because he said it was a tax. And with enough of that kind of complaint, the program went over the side and never replaced. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? Well, 
I got money from ETF. I so did I. <laughs> <laughs> so so I took computer classes to up to upgrade my skills through ETF, and I was grateful for the opportunity. Me too. And those are skills I still use today. Me too. And so in that perspective, we must be related. Yeah. Maybe we are. <laughs> maybe we're maybe we're twins. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but it's possible. <laughs> it's possible. Um, so I got, you got, we benefited from the training. Um, and certainly, I can understand where Sam's coming from as far as calling it a tax. However, um, you only get what you pay for. If you want a dedicated workforce with talent, you've got to be willing to put the resources into training that talent. Um, and I think it's important to remember, you know, you say companies aren't really interested in training their people. I don't think that's true. I think companies are very interested in training their people, but they don't know how. And there aren't sufficient resources available so that they don't even know what they don't know in terms of what kinds of skills does my employee need to have. You know, it's funny. I just flashed on one of those uh, computer training sc <coughs> schools <coughs> that mm -hmm. existed back at that time. Mm -hmm. And the one I went to, maybe you went to it also, and it, it occurs to me that it's not there anymore. It went away because it was dependent on this ETF process. Mm -hmm. And for the lack of students with some funding, it didn't happen. So, you know, I, I guess I would ask you, um, this is our final area of discussion today, and it's really what I've been driving at, is, is what kind of a workforce do we have uh, in business? downtown, the office environment that you and I are both familiar with, mm -hmm. but also, you know, the off the plantations, the current modern today workforce in Hawaii. We know it's not manufacturing. There are very few people involved in technology. Mm -hmm. There are tons of people involved in education, one kind or another. Um, and I suppose uh, th there's a lot of miscellaneous in, out there. Mm -hmm. But how would you define, describe uh, our workforce here today in Hawaii now? I think we've got a lot of raw talent. I, I think there has to be, um, along with that raw talent, a sense of accountability. Each person who is counting on a job to support themselves and their families economically has got to be clear about what they want to do in their life, what skills, knowledge, abilities, traits, and experience they need to do that successfully. And then they have to be willing to go out and get that training. And sometimes they can get it on the job, but sometimes it means education. And sometimes it means the right kind of education. I hate to say this because I work at a university, but the reality is not everybody needs a four-year degree um, or a master's degree or any other specific kind of academic degree. I mean, if you're a plumber, you're not going to use that. But some knowledge of hydromechanics and how to weld pipe, perfect. So get the right training for the job that you want. And then don't let people tell you you can't do it. Because frankly, if I had let people tell me that I wasn't a good candidate having come from Waipahu High School, I wasn't a good candidate to go to university, I wasn't a good candidate for a master's degree. We wouldn't degree. be here now. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. So this man had a, a leak in his, in his house under the sink. Okay. And he called a plumber to come down, and the plumber came down and slid under the sink, mm -hmm. and he hit the pipe a couple of times, mm -hmm. and fantastic, he, he fixed the leak. And uh, the, man, the man said, gee, that's incredible. You came, you slid under the, under the sink, you hit the pipe a couple of times, you fixed it. Uh, I'm really impressed. What is that going to cost me? And the plumber said, it's going to cost you $1,500. Mm -hmm. And the man said, $1,500? I'm a brain surgeon. I don't make that kind of money for, you know, five minutes work. It's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, but people aren't leaking when they come to see you. <laughs> and the plumber said, you know, that's true. When I was a brain surgeon, I didn't make that kind of money either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a lot of my students, we go around the room the first night of class, why do you want to be a manager? Why do you want to get into HR? And it's not unusual for people to say, because I want a high-powered, high-paying management job. And I said, well, if you really want a high-paying job, you're in the wrong place. You've got to go to trade school and get into either air conditioning, sheet metal, or plumbing. Well, you know, it sounds to me like somebody out there should be counseling and consulting our workforce mm -hmm. on how they can get best placed, best trained, 
and best best hired. Um, I don't think people, I mean, not only here but everywhere, mm -hmm. they don't really get that kind of advice. And, and I think that advice is, more, see if you agree, is more important now because things are changing. You know, technology is changing, our society is changing. Mm -hmm. So where do I go if I'm, say, a high school kid? I mean, maybe they have counselors at high schools, I don't know. They do. Um, or college. Where do I go to get straight on this and, you know, make my skills, my aptitudes work for this job market? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of a shameless plug, you could <laughs> call into the show while we're on Tuesday go. from 4 to 4.30 every other go. Thursday, you and you could ask us, <laughs> and we can talk about uh, what those skills are and where you can best get them. Um, but the other thing I'd say is find somebody you admire who's doing what you want to do and ask them, how, d how did you prepare for the career you have now? Uh, what school did you go to? What did you study? I actually learned that. Uh, from a man you probably remember. Uh, he's no longer with us, but his name was Jack Lord. And he was an actor on Hawaii Five-0, the, the real Hawaii Five-0. I remember. Not the one that's on now. I remember. Um, yeah. I, I got some summer work as an extra on Five-0 back really? in the day. <laughs> yeah, that These age. are the days when you wanted to be an actor. That's right. I remember in the that days now. when I wanted to be an actor. And one day, I balled up all my nerve and I went to talk to him. And I said, oh, Mr. Lord, you know, I really want to be an actor when I grow up. Can you tell me what to do? And he spent a half an hour talking to me about the schools he had attended, the directors he had worked with, the kinds of uh, things that he had done in his early days to really uh, hone his talent as an actor. And I learned a tremendous amount from that, half an hour of his time. And I think that people that are respected in their fields are willing to take that time yeah. to talk to people. And they should be willing to take their time. I mean, they should be willing to present themselves in schools or in a counseling environment and talk to people and answer their questions. And furthermore, kids, young people looking for answers, mm -hmm. they should not be shy about that. That's right. You cannot have shame in your game. <laughs> <laughs> because if you do, you're not going to get the information you need to make the best decisions. <laughs> That's Cheryl Crozier Garcia. No shame in her game. No, and none at all. not shy either. A <laughs> professor of human resources, management at HPU, working together. And you will see her every Tuesday from now on at 4 o'clock to 4.30, just like she says. And she will solve your problems. I hope so. <laughs>